Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. Please all stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. My soul is longing and yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out to the living God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of God's love by acknowledging our sins and by begging the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your unfailing compassion, O Lord, cleanse and protect your church. And since without you she cannot stand secure, May she be always governed by your grace, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master. For through him the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. Now the Arameans had captured in a raid on the land of Israel a little girl, Haman's wife. If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, 
she said to her mistress, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went and told his lord just what the slave girl from the land of Israel had said. Go, said the king of Aram. I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman set out, taking along ten silver talents, six thousand gold pieces, and ten festal garments. To the king of Israel, he brought the letter which read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When he read the letter, the king of Israel tore his garments and exclaimed, Am I a god with power over life and death? that this man should send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? Take note, you can see he's only looking for a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments, he sent word to the king, Why have you torn your garments? Let him come to me and find out that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. The prophet sent him the message, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will heal, and you will be clean. But Naaman went away angry, saying, I thought that he would surely come out and stand there to invoke the Lord, his God, and would move his hand over the spot, and thus cure the leprosy. Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, the far, far better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be cleansed? With this, he turned about in anger and left. But his servants came up and reasoned with him. My father, they said, if the prophet had told you to do something extraordinary, would you not have done it? All the more now, since he said to you, wash and be clean, should you do as he said. So Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The Word of the Lord. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When oh, shall thirst. I go and behold the face of God? O oh, thirst is my soul for the living God. As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O oh God. O oh, thirst is my soul for the living God. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? O oh, thirst is my soul for the living God. Send forth your light and your fidelity, and they shall lead me on, and bring me to your holy mountain in your dwelling place. O oh, thirst is my soul for the living God. Then will I go into the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. O thirst is my soul for the living God. Please stand.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue at Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of those that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath, in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, we all know that God is love. But many times, we do not understand the vastness of God's love. And this is what happened in our gospel today. Jesus was speaking in the synagogue of Nazareth. And he told his people two instances when God seemed to favor those who do not belong to the people of Israel. During the time of the prophet Elijah, when there was a famine, it was to not, not one of the Jews that Elijah went, but to the widow of Zarephath, who was not a Jew. And the prophet Elijah blessed the widow of Zarephath. And during the time of the prophet Elisha, as we heard in our first reading today, Naaman the Syrian, who was a leper, was cleansed. He was healed by God. And so when the Jews heard this, they got angry with Jesus because for them, for the Jews of Jesus' time, God is only for the race. God's blessings, God's love are only for them. For after all, they are the people of God. And they could not accept it. They could not accept that God could also bless God could also favor, God could also heal, God could also love those who do not belong to their, to their race, and even those they consider as enemies. Hindi nila matanggap na pwede ring mahalin ng Diyos, iligtas ng Diyos, at pagpalain ng Diyos yung mga iba sa kanila. Hindi nila kalahi at itinuturing pa nga nilang kaaway. My dear brothers and sisters, God's love has no limitations. God's love is not choosy. God's love is not selective. 
He simply loves and He loves all. This is so different from the way that we love one another. Our love is always choosy, always selective. We always identify the people who deserve our love, the people we want to love. Pinipili natin kung sino yung ating mamahalin. Pinipili natin kung kanino tayo magiging mabait. Pinipili natin kung sino ang ating aarugain. But God's love does not know any limitation. It could not be confined to a certain people. It could not be confined to a group of people. He simply loves, and when He loves, He loves everyone. My dear brothers and sisters, let us imitate the love of God. Let us stretch our love a bit. Let us stretch our hearts a bit. Let us do good. Let us be caring, not only to our family and to our friends, not only to the people that we want to love or the people who deserve our love, let us also be good and caring even to people we do not know, even to people we hate, even to people who do us wrong, even to people we consider as enemies. Let us ask the Lord for the grace to imitate His love and let us do a little bit of stretching. Let us stretch our hearts let us stretch our love. Please stand. Jesus was rejected by his own people. In faith, we accept Him as our Lord and Savior, and we pray in His name, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the Church may proclaim the Word of God with courage and live it with conviction, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that Christian parents may be strengthened to follow Christ, who is the way and the truth and the life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our Lenten penance may make us more open to God's redeeming love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the sick who find life difficult may see God's presence through the care and concern of their families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. That the dead who are in God's company may enjoy everlasting peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us pray for the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Almighty Father, since none of us come to Jesus unless you draw us to Him, make us all one with Him, that we may be with you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May what we offer, O Lord, in token of our service, be transformed by you into the sacrament of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so with the hosts of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and with one voice of praise, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Broderick our Administrator, and all the bishops and your entire people. 
just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, Saint John of God, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us ask the Father to forgive our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sinned against us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. May communion in this your sacrament, we pray, O Lord, bring with it purification and the unity that is your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May your right hand, we ask, O Lord, protect this people that makes entreaty to you. Graciously purify them and give them instruction, 
that finding solace in this life, they may reach the good things to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Today.